Good afternoon, everybody. This is author and journalist Sophia Nelson, and it is rare that I do a periscope during the middle of the day. But as you know, for those of you in corporate life and who work for the government, um, you know that uh, we often have brown bag chats and they are informational. And so today I thought I would address a very serious problem that is becoming more and more serious every day online and you're looking at a picture of a YouTube channel by this gentleman right here. His name is Mumia Obsidian Ali. He is known to harass and threaten women. Uh, he's done it to several high profiled African American women. I am his latest victim and I think we can all agree he chose the wrong person to do this with. But I'm going to address him, but then I'm going to address the larger issue and the more important issue of what do you do when someone starts to stalk, harass, demean, and threaten you, and what is your recourse, and what do you do? Let's talk. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Sophia. How are you? As I said, it is rare that I pop on to the internet in the middle of the day, but... I've been dealing with this person, this Mr. Mumia Obsidian Ali, who unbeknownst to me for the last two years has been posting videos about me on YouTube, stealing copyright protected images. That's the first violation of the law. Then going over the airwaves, which violates 18 USC section 275, because now you've transmitted through radio, through YouTube, through the internet, harassing, demeaning, false, misleading statements about another human being. I want to talk to you today, particularly the ladies, because I am deeply concerned about a pattern and practice that I see, not just on the internet, but in the media. For example, we had a group of U.S. Marines that recently released unauthorized nude pictures of fellow female Marines. We all know that um, the sex trade and sex trafficking and the stealing of young girls and the sale of women around the globe is at an all-time high. Kudos to my good friend Christine Kane and the A21 Network and the amazing work you do on this planet to help recover and rescue girls and boys and women. Folks, we have to have a serious conversation about a culture in America, but globally, that's in serious decline when it comes to how we still talk about and treat women. Women are still abused. I apologize for that if the screen blanked out. That was my phone. Women are still abused at the hands of their husbands and boyfriends at an alarming rate in the United States and around the world. In other cultures, in Muslim cultures, for example, if a girl or woman declines the marriage offer of a man who's older or of a different position, and if he feels offended, he can throw acid in her face. He can kill her or murder her or have her beat. If a man only suspects that his wife or intended has been unfaithful, he can have her put to death in some cultures. Folks, this is the year 2017. 2017. And women are still the victims of vile attacks at the hands of the men we love and trust. As a woman with a platform, with a national and global platform, I cannot be silent about this. Let me address first Mr. Mumia Obsidian Ali. Sir, you were warned very politely by me in writing on your Facebook page to cease and desist and take these vile, disrespectful, copyright infringing, inappropriate videos down. I would have just let it go, but that wasn't okay with you. You went on the air literally the next day showing my message to you, to your followers, and then what you did was you went in and then you attacked me as a spinster and you, you did more vileness. So let me explain to you what's going to happen from here. Let me be very clear with you because I'm not crystalline charism. I am not uh, uh, the lady Miss Wells that you attacked. You have a pattern and practice of this kind of behavior. My security team 
led by Mr. Willie Carter and others, as well as state and federal authorities starting in the city of Philadelphia, will be contacting you. You made a very serious mistake. One, I'm a bona fide, certified, and verified national brand. I am a public figure. I've got the blue checks. Unlike yourself, and we have a full dossier on you, sir, I know everything about you. You see, when you mess with people who are out of your league and you mess with people who have real power and real access, you're going to find yourself in a world of trouble. These women that you've picked on in the past, Crystalline and Miss Wells and others, we've watched your videos, we've watched your pattern and practice, and YouTube should be put on notice, as well as Google, that my lawyers have already written and sent a letter and they're going to take your videos down and your channel down or they're going to find themselves in a problem and in violation of federal laws as well. Sir, what you've done, again, under 18 U.S.C., Section 275 is you've broken the law. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but you can serve up to five years in federal prison or get a $25,000 fine for what you think is funny, for what you think you're entitled to do. Now, Mr. Mumia, Obsidian Ali, because I am a Christian woman, I'm going to speak to you directly about what I think's going on with you before I get into the bigger issue. Because I've done my homework on you. You haven't done your homework on me. You think you know about me. You pop off about my life. You pop off about the fact that I've put my career above my love life. Who the hell are you? You don't know me. What if... I was engaged to a black man who I loved as a young woman. And what if that man died of cancer? Would that make you shut your mouth? Would that make you step back and retract your ugly words? You don't know people's lives. You don't know why people's lives take the course that they do. And how dare you attack me and any woman because she's educated herself, because she has an opinion. You're sick. You need help. And for those that follow you, you're even sicker because you listen to a man spew venom about women that he's never met, that he doesn't know. But let me talk to you about Mr. Mumia Obsidian Ali. Let me tell you about him. Because here's a man who is self-admittedly, he's unemployed, he's on disability. He's had an ugly life. I suspect he has deep issues with his mother. He does not like women. He's short. He's unattractive. Those are his words, not mine. He's been repeatedly rejected by black women of a certain type. Those like me, apparently, who are doctors, lawyers, engineers, successful women. And so I think that at the end of the day, um, that you need to, and, and here are the trolls, they're starting, but that's okay. You can't silence me. My platform's too big. But I want to talk about this because I want to address this man directly because he has something wrong with him. And for those people who are in his life, I don't know who's in his life because I don't know him. But if he has people that love him, they should tell him to stop because your real friends check you before you wreck you. Your real friends call you out on your bad behavior and they say, man, that's not cool. Man, that's illegal. Man, that's bullying. Man, that's harassing. Sir. I've done nothing to you. I don't know you. I've never done anything to a member of your family. If you get on and you Google me and you check me out, you'll realize I'm a woman who gets on social media every day and spews positivity. I try to inspire people. I try to help people. My book, Black Woman Redefined, won awards. It was um, honored. It still is a bestseller. Black men's voices were represented in my book. The first time ever a black woman wrote a book with research and included the voices of black men because I found them to be important. I think that black men and black women need to love each other. Go look at my writings. They all say the same thing. I'm pro-black family. I'm pro-black marriage. Now, I can't take on the ills of the world. I can't fix men who are broken or angry or hate their mothers or hate women. I can't do anything for those men but pray for them. But what I will not do is allow you to bully me. You've picked on the wrong one. Number one, 
Esquire is behind my name. None of your other victims were attorneys. Number two, cybersecurity and national intelligence was my area of law before I stopped practicing law and became a journalist. That was your second mistake. And number three, I've got a platform that's big enough to not elevate you because that's what you're hoping for. You're hoping that you can get into a back and forth with someone like me and that somebody will give you a break, that somebody will help you. You've gone about it the wrong way. You see, hate never opens doors. Bullying never opens doors. Attacking people never opens doors. Had you contacted me a few years ago and said, Miss Nelson, would you like to come on my show and have a dialogue with me about the interview you did with Roger Allen Curry in 2011 and, and let's talk about it and treated me with respect and acted like a gentleman, I might have done so and that would have elevated your platform. I might have made a few phone calls to help you get an article in an Ebony or an Essence or on Huffington Post, but no, not you, not people like you. You're a thug. You're a bully, you're a liar, you're demented, you're sick. And let me tell you one other thing for your little followers who attack, who are on the comments talking about punch the bitch in the face and kill the bitch. I'm very worried about you and men who walk around so angry and so bitter and so pissed off at your lot in life that you would incite violence against women, again, that you don't even know. But I want to reiterate for you, because you popped off about having lawyers, sir. You don't have any lawyers. You're broke. You can't afford lawyers. I'm way out of your league. I'm too big for you. You bit off more than you can chew. I'm going to teach you a lesson through the proper channels of the law. Like I said, I am exceptionally well-connected and well-liked in the right places. And I'm going to abide by what the statutes say. We're going to send the right letters to Google and YouTube. Already been done. We've already flagged your videos. So we're going to make this very uncomfortable for you. And we're going to teach you how to shut your mouth and stop bullying and attacking women that you don't know. It's one thing if you want to have an opinion and say, you know, I don't like those books that Sophia Nelson writes. I don't think she's this or that. That's your opinion. You're entitled to that. But you're never entitled to create a pattern and practice of stealing my images without permission. Those are copyright protected images. So you violated several federal laws. But because nobody's ever called you on it, you continue to do this foolishness. You picked on the wrong girl. And so my point to you is, sir, is that I'm going to hold you accountable because bullies only stop bullying when they get punched back in the face in the schoolyard. So I'm going to punch you back in the face the right way with the law. We know where you live. We know everything about you. And another thing you should note, as someone who receives federal disability and disability payments, you will lose those benefits if you violate federal and state law and harass and commit illegal conduct like this. Clearly, you had no idea that what you thought was fun and you thought you could pick on people and bully people and you figured it was okay. Clearly, you were not well versed by your so-called lawyers that you can't engage in this type of activity. It's a violation of the law. And I'm going to keep saying that because for every other punk bully out there that takes videos of women that you are in a relationship with and you have sex with and then you post them later when you break up or you take nude pictures of somebody unauthorized, or you just get a bug up your butt about somebody and you just go on a rant about them, you can't do it. It's against the law. Every state in this country, every state, including the District of Columbia, has anti-stalking and anti-harassing laws. Every single one. But the federal law kicks in with you, Mr. Mumia Obsidian Ali, because you were dumb enough to transmit this over the Internet and to spread it. So the state is the least of your worries. You are now dealing with federal ramifications and federal sanctions and federal laws. I'm not letting this go because women have been killed by men like you. Girls 
have been harmed because of men like you and your followers who incite violence and attack and believe that if a woman doesn't date them, they have the right to punch them in the face or demean them or worse. Who believe that you can talk about women any old way. You don't know me. You know nothing about me. And how dare you get on and be so petty and so small that you would take another human being, me, who does good in the world. I don't bother anybody. I don't make videos about people. I don't slander anybody. I don't libel anybody. I go through my life. I write books to inspire, uplift, and help bring people together. That's my MO in life. That's my karma in life. And I feel sorry for you. And like I said, had you approached me a couple years ago like a man, like a gentleman, I would have helped you get a platform. I would have prayed with you if that's what you needed. It sucks to be rejected. It sucks to be picked on. And I'm sorry that people have done that to you. But damn it, it doesn't give you the right to do it to me or to Crystalline Karazin or Miss Wells or anybody else. We've done nothing to you. We don't even know you. Talk about those people that have hurt you. Why don't you take your hurt and use it for good? Why don't you write books about people being kinder to each other? Why don't you create a media network, Mr. Mumia Obsidian Ali, and do something positive and good in the world? Be a light in the world instead of darkness. Why don't you speak up about men who abuse women and pillage women and snatch girls and do evil and demean instead of being a thug bully yourself? You'll get on and you'll make another dumb video because you're stupid like that. Because you don't know when to shut your mouth and know that you have a serious situation on your hands. Now to your little followers out there who uh, try to publish people's home addresses and do all those things. I'm a public figure. You can find out anything you want about me. My life has to be an open book. I'm okay with that. But Smith and Wesson live at my house and I'm an expert shot. So stalk me, menace me, threaten me physically at your peril. I'm not someone who's afraid of you. I'm not someone who's going to cower in fear and let you do this juvenile delinquent nonsense that you're doing. You're a grown ass man. Act like it. Stop being so bitter. Life hasn't given me everything I wanted either. It has done that for none of us. There's none of us that walks this earth, sir, who has everything we want. There's none of us that walks this earth that has had an easy life. Even rich people, everybody's got something that they're dealing with. But it doesn't give us the right to go and assault, defile, and demean other people. It just does not. Now, to this larger issue, I want to talk to men, my men followers, and I want to talk to the men in my life, and the brothers that I know. To the good men out there like Roland Martin and Boyce Watkins and, and Dondre Whitfield and Devon Franklin and, and, and I can keep calling names Bishop Jakes, please stand up and help to train men like Mr. Mumia Obsidian Ali and help them with their self-esteem. Help them with their anger against their mothers, against being rejected. Help them realize that there's nothing wrong with being a blue-collared brother. My daddy is a blue-collared brother. He worked every day and brought food into our home and made sure that we had a roof over our head. So I have nothing against blue-collared brothers. Another lying, myth, filthy, wrong, bullying tactic of yours it just isn't true. Again, you haven't done your homework on me. You know nothing about me and my life and why I am a single woman at 50 years old and have no children. That is not the life I imagined for myself either. But you know what? I'm not going to be bitter about it. I'm not going to spew hate. I'm not going to create blogs and attack men and dog men and, and condemn men. Who does that? That's sick. It's sociopathic behavior. It's not normal. Life happens to all of us. It ain't over until you're dead. How am I verified? The blue check on Twitter, the blue check on Facebook, that's what that means. And if you got an attitude, I'm going to block you because today I'm not tolerating the foolishness anymore. No more bullying at the hands of small men in stature in mind, who are bitter, who are jealous, who are insecure, and wicked. There's no God in you. 
there is only anger in you and perversity in you and, and evil in you. And, and you need to be cleansed, Mr. Mumia. You need to find Jesus, Mr. Mumia, because I'm talking to men right now. I, I can't deal with, I'm dealing with this. And so I hope you find Christ. I hope you find that mediator in your life that helps you to heal from clearly the pain you're in, the, the horrible pain you're in that makes you feel less than, that makes you uh, hurt, that makes you attack and assault and assail people you don't even know. I don't know what you're confused about. My talk today is about cyber stalking and in particular this man named Mumia Obsidian Ali who's been stalking me and other women and creating videos and just being wicked, stealing images and violating federal and state laws. And I'm putting him on notice that I'm going to deal with him through the proper authorities and legal channels. That he's bit off more than he can chew. That he shouldn't have picked on this girl. Even though he picked on some other women. I'm not them. My platform is much bigger. My reach is much bigger. I'm an attorney. I've got a lot of friends. And we're going to make an example of this man. Because he needs to stop. And the people who follow him need to stop. I'm a human being just like everybody else. Yeah, it is high because I'm upset. I'm blocking you because I'm just not liking your, your commentary. You're out of here. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, folks, ladies, I want to say something to you. Listen to me very carefully. You have to take cyber stalking, email harassment, and threats very serious. They're serious. Women have been murdered walking to their cars. Women have been stalked, they've been abused, they've been threatened, they've been menaced. Crystal and Karazin, who runs Beyond Black and White Blog, is a good friend of mine. She's a good sister. She has a husband and she has a family. They put her address on the internet. They threatened to find out who her kids were. They uh, threatened to find out who her oldest daughter's dad was, a black man. She's now married to a white man. These are thugs. Again, they don't know her. They just don't like her opinions. They don't like that she's married to a white man. What I didn't know and what has been brought to my attention in the last 24 hours, folks, is that apparently there is a cottage industry of brothers, black men. And this breaks my heart because I love black men. I love all men, but I really love brothers because I got a black brother and a black father. And, and I think that it is a... It is tragic that black men are the only group of men on this planet that routinely write books about, articles, and blogs, and do videos like this and attack black women. Black women who've been their mothers, their aunts, their grandmothers, who fed them, who clothed them, who loved them. There's no woman on earth more loyal than a black woman. If you're watching the series Underground, which episode two comes on tonight, Look at that series and look at the history of who black peoples are in America and how we came here through slavery and what black women did to protect and preserve their black sons, their black fathers, their black nephews. Black women put their lives between guns, lynch ropes to save their black sons. Black women are loyal. They love, they'll sacrifice their last dollar, they'll work till they're dog tired to put shoes on the feet of their sons. And this is what you do, fellas. You get on the internet and you attack black women and you 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 maim them and you harm them and you threaten them and you distress them. Mr. Mumia Obsidian Ali, do you not know that when you post these videos, you cause mental distress, you cause fear, you cause concern for safety? Again, you're violating Federal Code 18 U.S.C. Section 275. You're in trouble. And I'm going to keep saying the law because I want you to all go look it up. And I want you to understand that cyber stalking, harassing, and menacing is real. And it is a problem. And women have been killed as a result of this type of video frenzy that, 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 that gets these, these weak men and these, these men who don't feel good about themselves excited, and then they go out and they stalk and they maim and they kill. This is a serious problem that we as a nation must deal with. This is a serious problem that we as a 
black people must deal with. Why are our men allowed to get on and just go in on us and, and rip at us and tear us? Because I educated myself? Because I went to school? Because I can speak? Because I've made something of my life? So you attack me for that? You need help. And like I said, and I'm going to close with this, Mr. Mumia, Obsidian Ali, I have a file on you. My security has a file on you. The Philadelphia police will have a file on you. And they're going to come and see you. The federal authorities are being notified about this as we speak. I've got that kind of reach. You picked the wrong one. You did the wrong thing. I'm going to hold you to account. And I'm going to do videos, but I'm not going to call names. I'm not going to do what you did. I'm going to make sure people know their rights. I'm going to make sure that women know they shouldn't be silent and afraid of thugs and bullies like you. I'm not. I'm not afraid of your followers. I'm not afraid of you. What I am is tired because I work hard every day. I try to be a good person. I try to do good in the world. I serve at my church. I try to feed the hungry clothe the naked, do what I'm called to do, and I have to get on the internet and be called the spinster bubble and butt herd and shoin fried feast and which means shit fest in German. Um just ugly, horrible attacks on a woman you've never met and do not know. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? But you've met your match, sir. You've met your match, broken boy. Small man, bitter man, angry man, disillusioned man. You hate your life. You hate the cards life has dealt you. So you're not man enough to do something about it. You're not man enough to, 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 to commit your life to Christ and something better and to, to lift in the world. You're not man enough to do that. Instead, you bully and you menace and you threaten and you stalk. And you rip and you tear because you're so pissed off at the women who rejected you. We've all been rejected. You don't attack people that reject you. You know what you do with rejection, sir? Rejection is protection. You thank God that he took those people away from you. And you trust that he's going to bring you somebody better. I don't know about you, Mumia, Obsidian Ali, but I know about me. I haven't given up on love. So what? I'm 50. So what? I haven't been married yet. And I don't have the wonderful, awesome blessing of children. But I have nieces. And before all said and done, I'm going to adopt some kids. Because many babies need a home. And I absolutely have someone amazing in my life. Who sends me flowers. Who treats me wonderful. Who acts like a man. Who feels proud to have me. And by the way, he's younger than me. Just saying. So this notion that black women can't get a man. This notion that we put our careers first is bullshit. It is utter bullshit. I know a whole bunch of black women starting with Michelle Robinson Obama who are professional, educated, smart, powerful, and married to equally powerful, smart, good black men. This is not all black men. I refuse to believe all my brothers are like you. I refuse to believe it because I know too many good brothers. And I'm calling on the brothers again, the Boyce Watkins, the Roland Martins, the, the Mark, um, Mark, 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 why can't I think of my brother Mark's name, brother Mark, who's CNN and wrote on black, uh, Mark Lamont Hill, Michael Eric Dyson. All you brothers need to stand up against a thug like this and his boys who curse, demean, and revile black women for just existing, apparently. So I'm done now, but I wanted to... Talk about this issue first to put Mr. Mumia Obsidian Ali on notice that he's in a whole lot of trouble and he better have some lawyers because he's going to need them. That's number one. Number two, I want to speak to his followers and say something's wrong with you that you don't have a problem with a man attacking a woman he doesn't know, he's never met. Do you have a mother? How about a sister? How about a daughter? Would you like someone blogging on your wife? Or your daughter, or your sister, or your mom? Or would it make you really angry and you'd want to punch the guy in his face? Right? So why is it okay for me? I'm somebody's sister. I'm somebody's daughter. I'm somebody's girlfriend. I'm somebody's friend. So this needs to stop. And then to the third point, which is the larger global issue of 
What do we do to stop the abuse and the cyber stalking and bullying of women through images, through posts, through threats, and through har harassment? Folks, this is serious. Women's lives have value. This is Women's History Month. And no woman should be menaced, threatened, or assaulted because she breaks up with her boyfriend, gets a divorce, decides that she wants to pursue a career, wants to travel, wants to do whatever she wants to do. No man should have the right to menace her and attack her and berate her for simply existing. It's got to stop. And the only way that it stops is people like me raise my voice and say, I'm going to do my part. I'm not going to let it go. I'm not going to just go, oh, he's a psycho. No, he's broken the law. And I'm an attorney sworn to uphold the Constitution of the United States. And when I see the law being broken, I have a duty that I swore back in 1995 when I was admitted to the bar of the United States Supreme Court. That, thank you, that's nice. And I think that um, at the end of the day, we need to really stop this scourge of violence against women. It is emotional violence, it is physical violence, it is spiritual violence, it's violence, and it has to stop. Brothers, I'm calling on you. Out this guy, go after this guy, report this guy. Don't threaten his life, don't do anything like that. No, that's not when Michelle Obama said it. Hello. When they go low, we go high. But when they break the law, we report them. You understand? That's it. I will not speak on this again. My lawyers are handling it. My security's handling it. But I wanted to be on the record, and we will post this video on YouTube shortly. And I want everybody to know that this Obsidian Mumia Ali man, whatever his name is, doesn't know me. He's never met me. He's stealing my images off. He's stalking my sites clearly. He's pulling pictures. He's just menacing me he's harassing me he's intimidating and threatening and and getting others to incite violence against me that's awful and it's not going to be tolerated thank you for listening please do your part to stop cyberbullying please do your part to stop harassment and menacing of women who are doing nothing but just being women god bless you and keep you I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.